Hello everyone, welcome back to Dragonfly Engineering. So this week we're going to finish up the two round cores for the plastic disc mold that we started a few weeks ago. And then after these tunnel gates are machined, which if you're interested in tunnel gates, I described them in a little more detail on the Sprue Whacker episode about three weeks ago. Anyway, so once these cores are finished, after we cut these tunnel gates, then we will switch up and make the stripper plates that go around these round cores which will strip the plastic ring off of the core. So, enjoy the show.
Okay, so we got the plate loaded up on the three jaw chuck here with the blue spacers. These things are kind of nice. They're magnetic and they stick right onto your three jaw chuck and then, you know, it, it creates a nice parallel face for you. And I've got three of them. I got two of them on here plus an extra shim to bring this plate out such that we got enough exposure to cut our one degree ring pocket into the end of this stripper plate. And basically this plate is going to nestle into a round core post that creates the features for this molded part. The one degree is the draft angle so that the, the plastic can eject out of the mold in a two-step operation. So this plate is going to push the part off of the round core and then we're going to have extra little air cylinder actuated ejector pins as a secondary ejection to knock the part out of the ring that it is still in which was used to push the part off the core. So kind of a two-step ejection process. So I've set the, the boring bar tool height just now using an optical loop. And this chuck is pretty good. I forgot the name of it, but and the, this, its badge is worn off. But it, it always chucks up to within a few thousands, but I did have to knock it around a little bit to try to get it to within about one and a half thousandths of run out which is kind of important because we do have ejector pins that need to string on to this stack up. The actual uh, settling or con concentric, concentric um, coaxial nesting of this stripper plate to the core can actually be set by uh, the, the circle that we're, cut, that we're turning into the plate now. So the worst case scenario is that the ejector pins and the main mold block maybe shifted by like one and a half thousandths, but the ejector pins behind the stripper plate are going to be in a clearance hole anyway of probably two or three thousandths. So I think we're good. So uh, basically the moral of the story is that we're gonna define the, the primary feature with turning on this rough cutout circle. And then I'll load this guy back onto the mill, find the exact center of our turned circle and then we can machine the, the backside uh, 30 degree relief shutoff surface that will basically create the seal in the mold. Almost like a huge engine valve seal <laughs> is effectively what we're gonna make after we finish turning the one degree profile on the front. So I think I've done enough jabber, so let's, let's do it. And this, this is kind of a cheap import brazed on boring bar which I've loaded in, so it's not very sharp, so it does chatter a lot, so I'm gonna have to make really fine cuts. Okay, so we'll back off the, the face. Uh, and the uh, first thing I'm gonna do is, is cut the, the I guess the, um, the skinny diameter, and then we're gonna do the one inch taper by uh, programming in a one inch taper cut as the final cut here. Doesn't sound too bad. And our cut needs to go to 21.1 millimeters. So I've got a few shallow cuts and then it's gonna probably get a little noisy once we get into the thicker cuts. I may have to back off because of the lack of rigidity and quality of this boring bar. Or I'll just go slow. There's the chatter. All right, so I'll back off that. Back up a little more. Get our bird's nest out of there. This is aluminum, so you can grab that stuff a little safer, but you can still cut your fingers. If it was steel, you'd definitely cut yourself. All right, I'm gonna test with this WD-40 to see if that helps with our cut for when we do our finished angle cut. All right, so we're gonna go into the final dimension, 151.868. So I'm looking at the DRO off camera here, and we are good. I'm, I'm manually turning this controller on this CNC lathe. Mostly because I'm, I'm watching the cut from this old nasty 
boring bar. I may have to follow this up with Brillo or something to clean up this wall. But sometimes you do want to have a rough surface in parts of your mold so that you ensure that you pull the part off on the right side of the mold when it opens. Ideally the ejector side. Here we go. And I'm going to slowly back out to do kind of a spring pass. Really need to get better boring bars. <laughs> Okay. All right, so our outside dimension with our one degree angle is 152.6. So I'm going to set that now. And I'll set the Z, actually I'm gonna do a test first to check the, the orientation of our angle. So I'm just out here in space. Well, I can still go to 152.6. But I'm going to do a test motion. So with this, with this lathe, you can tell it to do a single action. And in our case, we're going to tell it to cut at a one degree angle. Uh, so as I turn the, the uh, Z axis in, the X is going to be changing such that we get a one degree angle. But I'm actually going to make it a much bigger angle just to make sure the direction of the angle is correct. Because you can cut into your part or out of your part. So if we go to do one, and then we say a taper, I'm going to say one degree. Actually, no, let's, let's do uh, 45. And then as I, now when I turn the knob, I'm only actually turning, here I'll show you. Yeah, here we go. So now that I set up angle equals 45, when I turn the Z axis, the X axis is changing as well to create a 45 degree cut. But this 45 degree cut is, is going the wrong direction. It's, it's going into the part and we want to do a cut going out of the part. So I'm going to hit return and then tell it to do a taper again. But now I'm going to say minus 45 and then absolute or incremental set. Now when I turn the knob, the 45 degree angle goes the direction that we want. I don't know if you can see that but we're going into the center, and then you can see the numbers changing up here to keep that 45 degree angle. Let me zoom in. Here I am, I'm just turning the Z axis actuator, but you can see how our part, or our cutter is actually moving at a 45 degree, and I'm not even touching the, the X axis. So that's kind of nice for cutting in simple angles into things. And then it'll go back to the position where you, you told it to start the angle. So there's kind of a travel limit. I keep spinning this knob, but it stopped moving because we're back at the uh, 152.6 on the, on the display here. But we want to do one degree. So we will get out of this. And I'm going to bring the tool back to the start of our one degree cut, which is basically at Z equals zero. And diameter is 152.6, which is our X. All right, so I'm going to say do one, taper, and then minus one degree incremental set. So now when I turn this thing on, we're going to start cutting a one degree taper until we get to 19 millimeters. There we go. About 330 RPM. And we are locked in to do our angle cut, so as I start moving the Z, I'm going to watch the X to make sure that number gets smaller. Even though it's a very small angle, but there it, it's starting to reduce in diameter on X, even though I'm only actuating the Z knob on this, on this manual CNC control. And I'm going to keep going at, as close to a constant velocity as I reasonably can until Z goes to minus 19. And we are getting a very slight one degree angle cut into the cylinder of our stripper plate, which is actually the finished features of the plastic part itself.
Okay, so we got one millimeter to go. There we go. And then I'll back out. Ever so slowly, and I'm doing like what's considered a spring pass here, and I'm basically just skimming the surface and cleaning up anything and hoping I don't get any weird chatter or bird's nest recutting, <laughs> which almost happened there. Okay, and now I'm spinning the knob, and uh, but we're back at the start position and nothing's happening. So I can return out of angle mode and then turn off the spindle. And there we cut our one degree taper. Using the lathe instead of the, the end mill, or instead of the milling machine. I didn't have a one degree end mill that went deep enough, so we had to chuck this up on the, to the lathe to make that one cut feature. But it worked out, it looks like. All right, I'm gonna hit this surface with a Brillo, but I'm only gonna try to actually uh, smooth the flat surface. It's, it's usually not a good idea to uh, to round off corners and molds because usually that means you get flash. So I'm going to see what I can do here. I might reduce the RPM all the way down to the lowest and see what we can do. Actually I don't even really think I need this Burlo. The surface looks pretty smooth. And again, sometimes you actually want the features of your mold to be rougher to grab the plastic and pull, pull the mold open correctly such that the plastic is on the B side of your mold. So, yeah, that's, that's actually really smooth. You can see it. You can see where I gently pulled away the, the Brillo. So yeah, that, that cutter, if I make small cuts, actually made a really good finish there. So that's nice. So when you clamp on the inside diameter, you uh, always mess this up, but you have, to, you have to turn your wrench or your chuck key the other direction. So yeah, that's wrong. Because you need to close down to release your part. And in fact, I don't want to do something any, any stupider than I've already done before. <laughs> All right. There we go. Okay, and we're off. Here's the little spacers. I cut this little sheet metal spacer. This was to rough in the, the part location. And then I actually used uh, the dial indicator to knock the uh, face in to be uh, perpendicular to the cutter. Okay, so we'll put our our stripper plate that we just turned on the lathe upside down and then we can cut the back feature and face off the back too. There we go. Try to center it on these two vices which are squared up to each other. Or should be. Maybe I should double check that. I guess it doesn't matter because we're doing a round cut. <laughs> Alright, so I got our plate loaded upside down or the, so we can do the back side operation. And I'm going to face off the back to the correct thickness. So I'm going to check the four corners for thickness to make sure this plate is parallel to its primary machine surface. After that, we are going to sweep in the, the lathe turned circle using a dial indicator. And then we're going to machine in a 30 degree back relief circle with like a, a 30 degree wall, like a seal, like a, a valve seal that I mentioned over on the lathe. And then we will be done with this part. Oh, I'll probably chamfer the ejector pin holes a little bit on the back side. All right, so I did a test cut and you can see how I, I still have some sunken metal in this billet right here. See how that profile is not shiny. Uh, but I'm already below the dimension that I need to have for this stripper plate by a, about one millimeter. 
So I'm going to have to update the design and the mold for the parts that I haven't made yet to accommodate the fact that this stock was a little too wonky uh, and sunk in. And now I've, I've got like basically an incomplete edge here. So I basically need to explore and cut down such that I've got a clean edge right here. And then update the, uh, the feature and the uh, this this cut ring in the back that we're going to do and then update the rest of the mold parts to accommodate this different size stock unfortunately it's not a big deal but sometimes you know with, with these projects you just got to react to unknown things like like bad stock to start with <laughs> and this was expensive too it's a 7075 which is aircraft strength aluminum which is about twice as strong as 6061 anyway so we'll just clean this up and then I'll deal with it in the CAD for the rest of the parts that match with this one. All right, so I just set the Z height of this 30 degree tapered end mill. So we can go up and stick on our dial indicator. I have a rough idea of where zero is, so we can move to that now. All right, so now we can bring this guy down. Should be real close, because this is the second plate. All right, since we got a taper, maybe I can just bring the tool up until it starts to touch. We need to actually touch the lathe turned face, so. All right, so now we're bouncing. May not be able to see that, but. <laughs> anyway. I'm going to spin this indicator around and see that the needle doesn't change, and if it does, then I will adjust X and Y appropriately. And you got to make sure your needle is actually on the surface by wobbling or basically touching it and seeing that the needle moves. All right, so half a thousandth on X. I use the Heimner indicator to find this, but our ring should be off by like a thousandth from the original machined one. And I used this original machine cir circle, but things are looking pretty good. Let me reset the dial to the X left. Huh. I think we're right, pretty much on it. That's half a thousandth. Yeah, I think we're on it. All right, I'd say we're good. So we're 20 microns or eight tenths of a thousandth off from the Heimer. All right, so let's load the program and we're gonna cut down 3.14 millimeters. And that's after I compensated for the mass rate uh, that uh, the stock being too short. So it all worked out. All right, so I think we're all set up. We got the tool height, the 30 degree chamfer end mill in there. So let's fire it up, see what happens.
right, so the stripper plate's gonna be actuated by a couple of rods that push this plate. So we need to drill or machine the tap hole and then tap a 3816 thread and then machine a little three quarter inch receiving pocket to accurately place the, the rod that we're gonna make uh, pretty soon actually so that we can tie this guy into the ejector plate below. So let's do it. So we got this final little ring here of material where the profile of the part needs to basically meet the, the seal ring that the 30 degree cut that we did on the previous operation on the mill. Anyway, the, uh, the lathe cut couldn't quite get to the line because it needs to be a single line there, basically two triangle edges that meet, you know, like so. Uh, so I'm going to wrap this up using this long spindly high speed steel one degree eighth inch end mill and basically cut off this last little bit of a ring here and blend this, this one degree face into the 30 degree face of the seal shut off. That way we'll have a little bit of a triangular lip here that will eject the part out when this ejector plate pushes the part off of the core. So let's do that. I'm gonna hit start. Get our coolant ready if we need it. 